Hello, everyone, and good day. This presentation is about science and technology writing or pagsulat ng balitang agham at teknolohiya. This is for both English and Filipino categories of this Press in Action Conference by Southwestern University, FINMA. Although for the most part, my presentation is in English, there are a few slides that I present in Filipino. Okay, so let us start. My talk covers the following. Introduction, challenges facing the science and technology writers. What is science and technology writing and how does it differ from scientific writing? What are the SNT writing formats? How to write about SNT, which includes gathering information and writing your story. Some more guidance and guidelines about SNT writing in terms of structure, style, checking stories, and formatting checklist. SNT writing types, and of course, at the last part, you will know the competition or contest guidelines in terms of topic and rating rubric. So as we all know, science is the organized study of man and the universe by means of observation, measurement, and experiments. While technology is the practical application of science, Science and technology are important as they affect our lives more each day. However, communicating the importance of these scientific research works is a challenge. All scientists write. They write research papers, grant proposals, and talks for conferences. But that's not science and technology writing. This is where science and technology writers come in. Without science and technology writers, the world of science and scientists would remain a mystery. This supports the myth that science is inaccessible and only understood by scientists themselves. A good science and technology writer can extract the important parts of a story without getting lost in the details. They can analyze the different elements of a complicated science research paper and write about it in an engaging and accessible way. Moreover, they act as a sort of translator between the scientific community and the public at large by reporting on what is important, clarifying what isn't clear, asking the right questions, and looking for the right answers. Up until this day, science and technology writers face challenges in the field. As a writer, you should remember the following basic facts and principles. First, always remember that you are a bridge between the world of science and your community. You do not need to know as much as the scientists. You simply need to be able to put the relevant parts of their knowledge into words which your audience can understand. Next, if you write something you do not understand, you risk making errors. Then, the aim of scientists is precision, and the aim of writers is simplicity. There should be no conflict between the two. You must be able to express the precise details of science accurately in simple terms. Most science and technology will have human applications. For every story, you must ask yourself, how will this affect my readers' lives? Some science, such as astronomy, has no impact on our everyday lives, but is interesting in what it tells us about our universe. The task here is to report it in an interesting and informative way. You must always be accurate because science and technology are built on accuracy. Your readers usually trust science. Often in fields of such as medicine, their lives may depend on it. You should not alarm them by making sensational claims which may not be true. So what is science and technology writing? It refers to writing about a scientific or technological subject matter often in a non-technical manner for an audience of non-scientists, a form of journalism or creative non-fiction. It is also known as 
popular science writing. It may also refer to writing that reports scientific and technological observations and results in a manner governed by specific conventions, like a form of technical writing, more commonly known as scientific writing. Distinguishing between science and technology writing and scientific writing is reasonable. They have different purposes and a different audience. Therefore, science and technology writing should not be confused with scientific writing. Let's take a look at their differences. In science and technology writing, writers write for readers who are not necessarily scientists. While in scientific writing, scientists write for readers who are also scientists or experts in the field. In s and writing, writers simplify terms so the readers can relate. In scientific writing, writers use jargons specific to the field of study. In science and technology writing, articles are published in newspapers and magazines, while in scientific writing, they are usually published in scientific journals. For example, in scientific writing, you say, empirical and clinical insights on internet gaming disorder, emerging conceptual and measurement issues. That is the headline. It's very vague. It cannot be understood immediately by a common person. So in science and technology writing, you may say, Saturn's auroras may explain the planet's weirdly hot upper atmosphere. Okay, so these are the different things, okay? Now let us explore the different kinds of science technology writing that exist and the audiences they address. Science and technology writing comes in the form of, first, science magazines. This is where we see journalistic writing, news features, and opinion pieces. Next, newspapers. As a writer, like any other writer, has a job of reporting around a story and then telling that story accurately. Next, university magazines. The science writing used here is often newsworthy report about a piece of research published recently. Next, press releases. A press release will explain the research in a catchy way. And then we have blogs. By their nature, blogs tend to give a personal perspective and offer opinion rather than straight facts. So the language of science and technology is one of the main reasons why some journalists are afraid of reporting in this area. In many cases, it is like listening to a foreign language which you cannot understand. You can overcome most problems by, some, by following some simple rules. So first, understand the jargon. Scientific names and technical terms, sometimes called jargon, are necessary for scientists. It enables them to speak more accurately to one another about things they have in common. Remember, you are the bridge between the scientists and the readers. Find out the simple meanings by asking the scientists concern or your contacts or look it up in a dictionary. It is possible and sometimes it is informative to include scientific terms in reports as long as they are explained immediately in words your audience can understand. For example, researchers in California say they have found a new way of testing unborn babies for spina bifida, a deformity of the spine which can cause paralysis. Number two, use concrete words where possible. People understand solid, concrete things which they can feel, smell, see, touch, taste, or hear, or in other words, the tangible stops. Because much of science is about ideas, where possible, you should explain the scientists' abstract ideas in concrete words your ordinary readers can understand. For example, instead of describing the strength of a new sewing, sewing thread in scientific terms, saying that it will resist a force of so many kilograms, you might write a story telling the same facts, but in concrete terms like 
scientists in China have invented a sewing thread so, so strong that it could take the weight of a fully grown elephant. Obviously, no one is going to hang an elephant from a crane to, deter, to demonstrate the new sewing thread, but the image shows people how strong it can be. Similarly, when reporting sizes, especially very large or very small sizes, translate them into terms which you ordinary readers can understand. For example, breeders in Papua New Guinea have produced a new breed of super pig, which can weigh up to 750 kilograms, about the weight of a small car. Next, do not overload with figures. Do not overload your stories with large numbers or lots of figures. In many cases, especially at the start of a story, you should round figures off to make them simpler to understand. For example, 19,750 kilometers becomes almost 20,000 kilometers. That would be better. And last, next is write brightly and succinctly. Your audience will not like long, boring explanations. Keep your words clear and simple. Try to limit the important ideas to one or at least two per sentence. Let us look at the following example. So uh, farmers on New Ireland are battling a plague of the new insect species, Penetrans logolis, which is related to the horse fly and has devastated large herds of pigs in Africa and South Asia and already killed 527 pigs on the island by laying eggs in their ears, which eventually hatch into maggots, which borrow their way into the animal's brain in search of food. So reading such example is quite difficult to understand, um, not to mention the, dangle, the dangling sentence. So this is wrong, okay? The best way to do it is, Big farmers on New Ireland are battling an insect plague which has already killed more than 500 pigs on the island. The insect, which is related to the horsefly, has already devastated herds in Africa and Southeast Asia. The new species called Penetrans logolis lays its eggs in pigs' ears. When the eggs hatch, the maggots burrow into the animal's brain in search of food. Next tip. Do not sensationalize. Bad journalists sensationalize stories because they are more concerned with grabbing the attention of the readers than with telling the news accurately. Sensationalizing strong emotions such as hope or fear in readers. This is especially dangerous in a field such as medical research. Sensational claims in other fields also, even as remote as astronomy, can cause harm. In some cases of sensational reporting, there is little difference between exaggeration and lying. Exaggeration often leads so far from the truth that it becomes a lie. You must never lie to your readers. Number six, give background details. Very few new scientific or technological developments happen by accident. Most are the result of work over time. Your job is to place all developments in context, explain how we got to the situation today. In a story about a new pocket computer, explain a little about the history of computers and how the new, the new small version compares with existing computers. The background details should be written as simply and clearly as the rest of the story. They should be kept as short as possible because your audience is mainly interested in the latest news, not in history. Okay, now let us look at the factors you need to know or to consider before you begin writing your story. To get started, ask yourself the following question. Is it newsworthy? If you want to write about the latest scientific results, which have recently been published, check that the work is a significant advancement. Science is generally incremental and genuine breakthroughs are seldom seen. Next, is there any human interest? 
If your chosen story doesn't captivate you, then this will be reflected in your writing. It's unlikely that your audience will be interested if you are not. Your story could be based on human interest, something about the scientists or other people involved in the story, or the particular situation in which they found themselves. Next, is it timely? Timing is crucial. Why should your reader care about the story right now? It isn't enough to say that you just learn about it. A story needs a recent or upcoming event to anchor it in the present. By using multiple sources of information, you'll be able to paint a richer picture of what it is and how it was discovered. You should use both primary and secondary sources as you gather information. Primary sources of information are those which are directly related to the event, study, or object. These include factual accounts, recording events as they happen, for example, reports written by scientists who performed the experiment, research data, articles in journals, historical and legal documentation, statistical data, eyewitness accounts, speeches, conference notes, or even dissertations. You can then use secondary sources after the primary sources. So these resources help you gather further information. Secondary sources interpret or discuss or analyze and summarize primary sources. They can usually be found in the following PubMed website, and Google Scholar, okay? You can use these sources to find experts in certain fields and then search for their profile page on their company or university website. This will list research papers and point you to some useful general background articles. Next is articles in reputable publications. For example, newspapers, magazines, books, or scholarly journals that discuss or evaluate someone else's original research. Next, Wikipedia, like text or textbooks, encyclopedias, the www. This is a useful research tool, but don't over rely on it. The vast amount of information available here is useful, but remember to always check elsewhere the sources which you find in the references on a Wikipedia page. When you have considered who your readers are and what you want to write about, it's time to work out the structure of your story. Science writing, whether a hard-hitting news story or a friendly blog post, just like any other story, needs a narrative and it needs structure. You can break down most news articles and even longer features into a few sections. First, the headline. If we start at the beginning, we have the headline, but I suggest coming back to that after you've finished writing your article because that by then you'll be clearer about what you want to say and a headline will hopefully fall into place more naturally. So we'll get back to that. Next is the stand first. In a new story or a feature, there's often a second longer headline-like sentence known as a stand first. This is a snappy summary of the story without repeating the headline. Then we have the, the first line. Next comes the story itself and the most crucial part of it, the first line. In this single, single innocent sounding sentence, you have just one chance to hook your reader and make them want to carry on reading. Of course, we have the bulk of the story. There are different ways to tell a story, but a simple one is to put the most interesting stuff at the top, followed by explanations of what it means. Try to make sure each paragraph only discusses one aspect of the story to keep it simple. As the story moves on, the least interesting stuff generally comes at the end. Next are quotes. A good way to break the story up 
is with quotes from the relevant sources, like the primary and the secondary sources. You might then include something about the implications or applications of what you're writing about. And then we have using examples. If you're trying to explain a complicated scientific technique or research writing, it is possible to use analogy and metaphor, but do so sparingly as trying to insist something into well-known metaphor often backfires. And lastly, the ending. There are different ways to finish a story. A pertinent quote from an expert with a word about what happens next is one way. It's often a good idea, especially for a longer piece, to tie the last line in with the first line and the introduction to the story bringing the reader back to where they began. When you've finished, read through your work and cut out anything that doesn't need to be there. Check and double check your facts. Make sure the reader, the reader will follow what you've written. And then you, back, you go back to the headline. So for the headline, it should be short. It should convey the essence of the story and be easy to read. When you are writing for print publications, write your headlines to fit specific spaces. In, in online publications, write your headlines to include keywords that will help that story to appear in search engine searches. You have learned some of the basics about writing. Let's now proceed to some more guidelines to writing your science and technology article in terms of structure, style, checking stories, and formatting checklist. Without structure, stories are random sentences and fragments of scenes. Here are some thoughts about how to give a story an effective overall structure. First, transitions. Why does one paragraph follow another? Why does one sentence follow another sentence? Readers should be able to see for themselves the way that the parts of a story link closely together. Otherwise, it's easy to get lost among disconnected passages. Next, scenes. Before you add a scene to a story, make sure it matters. If you cut a scene out, does the story still hold together? If it doesn't, the scene is essential. Find ways to convey the humanity of people in your scenes. Use their words, appearances, and actions. Give your scenes life. And the last one is paragraphs. Each paragraph should be placed in the right logical place in a story. Each paragraph should have a unifying point. Don't start talking about one thing at the, at the outset of a paragraph and then unwittingly slide into another topic midway through. Next is in terms of style. You begin with the fact that stories are about people. It's all too easy to forget that science doesn't happen by itself. To say a study found that salt is bad for you is problematic. Studies don't do anything. People run studies and people find out things. Next, active voice, not passive. The scientific community favors writing in passive voice. They shouldn't, nor should you. The passive voice dissolves the power of narrative. It destroys the impact of action. It sows confusion about who did what. Sometimes the passive voice cannot be avoided, but for the most part, you can find an active voice alternative. And then we have writing in first person. Using the first person turns the writer into a character. Is the writer important enough to the story to warrant that special role? If not, the writer becomes an awkward guest. There are of course exceptions to this rule. Sometimes first person is the right choice. A story focused on writer's own experiences with a disease, for example, obviously requires the first person. Next is about rhetorical questions. 
Try to avoid them. They are the empty calories of science writing. Replace rhetorical questions with declarative sentences that advance the story. And then jargon. Scientists invent words which they use to talk to each other efficiently. But most people outside a scientist's subspecialty have no idea what many of these words mean, including other scientists. Formality, it is the jargon's dangerous cousin. Even if you don't use a single word of jargon, you can still use language in a way that's confusing and unwelcoming. Lastly, don't presume readers think just like you. In order to change minds and move readers, you must recognize that many of your readers may not think the way you do. Before submitting a piece of story, um, you go through a final checklist. Even the most gorgeous piece of prose can be ruined by careless handling. Here are some crucial items to cross your list. So it's dangerously easy to make factual mistakes in science writing because we deal with so many facts. Some publications will employ fact checkers to check your work. Otherwise, check it yourself. Do not simply send your drafts to sources to check. Before submitting a story, yeah, that's it. And then next is um, going through the checklist. Is your file properly formatted? File format, name, word count, etc. Are you close to the assigned word count, like 1,500 or 1,000 words or 500 words? Are your codes properly formatted? Is your fact checking annotation in good shape? Double check your spelling and grammar. Kill that last dangling participle. Make your sentences simpler. Do not do danglings. Okay, so let's now look at the typical science and technology sections in a publication. We have science and technology news. Katulad ng news writing, ang science news ay isang uri ng balita na karaniwang nagpapahayag ng pagkakatuklas o mga pangyayari sa mga bagay na may kinalaman sa siyensya. Then we have science and technology editorial. Ito ay isang sulating editorial na naglalaman ng opinion, pahayag, kuro-kuro ng manunulat tungkol sa isang isyong pangagham o argumentong may kinalaman dito. Number three, science and technology interpretative. Ito ay kalimitang naglalaman ng mga paglalarawan, pagbibigay definisyon o paglalahad ng mga facts o ideya ng facts. And lastly, science and technology feature. Katulad ng science news, ito rin ay isang paraan ng pagpapahayag ngunit mas malikhaing paraan. Inilalathala dito ang iba't ibang mga pagkakatuklas o mga ideyang may kinalaman sa agham, ngunit ginagamitan ang mga ito ng mabubulaklak na salita. Okay, so it's time for our con contest specifications. Okay? So, for English category, you have to always refer to competition guidelines that were given to you, especially for mechanics and formatting. You may write science and technology feature or news article. And your topic is statin treatment and withdrawal among COVID-19 patients. Okay, statin treatment and withdrawal among COVID-19 patients. For the Filipino category, same, you have to refer to competition guidelines for mechanics and formatting. You may write also science and technology news or feature. And your topic is commercial space flight and space tourism. Again, your topic is 
commercial space flight and space tourism. For English, Staten treatment and withdrawal among COVID-19 patients. For Filipino, commercial space flight and space tourism. We will be using this particular score sheet or rubrics taken from DepEd Memorandum 176, where we consider 40% for technical content is 50%, ethics is 10% for a total of 100%. Good luck to you all and thank you.